Hello, my name is Michael Kotler. I'm a programmer in Varsky Lab at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. I'm going to present you some of the recent updates made in CWL Airflow, a lightweight pipeline manager that we are currently using for data analysis in our lab. For those who are not familiar with Airflow or common workflow language, here is the next slide. Airflow is a task-driven workflow management system that was developed by Airbnb and currently is one of the most popular open source systems widely used for the workflows in the commercial field. On the other hand, Common Workflow Language is an open standard for describing analysis workflows in a way that makes them portable and scalable. It was designed to meet needs of data-intensive science, such as bioinformatics, astronomy, machine learning, etc. CWL Airflow is a Python package to extend Airflow functionality with the ability to parse and execute workflows written in CWL. So what we really wanted to do was to make these two pieces work together. Our main motivation was to upgrade our data analysis platform by a wardrop with the new scalable and reproducible workflows. Searching for the best way to describe computational pipelines, we paid our attention on common workflow language as the most perspective standard at that time. Constantly increasing number of new experiments pushed us to start developing our own workflow management system. As a basis for that system, we chose Airflow. We started our project on GitHub in 2017, already having some implemented ideas and solutions for replacing our old Python scripts with the new CWL pipelines. Once we got working code, we decided to take part in the Workflow Execution Challenge organized by Global Alliance for Genomics and Health in 2017. The aim of the challenge was to test and demonstrate pipelines portability between different workflow management systems, as well as to test and evaluate different platforms that took part in the challenge. 25 teams submitted execution results of 11 pipelines run on 18 different platforms. We participated both as a CWL pipeline contributor and as a developer of the workflow management system. The results showed that CWL Airflow, as well as other tested platforms, complies with the CWL specification, supports portability and performs analysis in a reproducible manner. The next step was presenting our software to the community on BOSC conference in 2018. There, my colleague Andre explained us how to use CWL Airflow as a backend for the data analysis platform called BioWardrop. At that time, we've been already listed as workflow management system that supports CWL standard. In 2019, we successfully published our paper in Giga Science Journal describing CWL Airflow. The paper aroused interest to our software in both CWL and Airflow community. Even some of the big companies, such as Illumina, started to develop their own version of CWL Airflow based on the fork from our repository. Later, in 2020, CWL Airflow was listed on the Airflow ecosystem page. We also presented our talk on the recent BOSC conference. Based on the fair criticism and feedbacks from users, we decided to make some changes in our program. Here we can see how the original version of CWL Airflow works. Briefly, when Airflow Scheduler imports DAX from the DAX folder, it also loads a special CWL DAX Python file. This file knows the location of the jobs folder, from where it can read new job files. When parsed, a new job file points on the location of the workflow to be executed with. After loading the workflow, a new instance of CWL DAX class is constructed. It reflects the workflow structure as a combination of step operators. The job is prepared by job dispatcher, while the workflow execution results are placed into the output folder by the gatherer step. Using this approach, we generate a new deck for every new run, regardless of whether the same pipeline has been already used or not. The system overloaded with the redundant decks works slow and cannot be efficient. To solve this problem, we decided to switch to another architecture, where we can trigger the same workflow with updated input parameters. In this configuration, every new workflow results in creation of a new CWL DAG. If the new job is run with the same workflow, it will not create a new DAG, but run the old one. 
We also remove the necessity for the jobs folder, as the new DAX can be easily triggered with the required input parameters through the REST API, Airflow web server, or command line interface. In case someone needs to monitor a special folder for the new job files edit, it can be easily implemented as a separate standard for Airflow DAG. To add a new workflow, one should simply write a small Python script and place it into the DAX folder. Only two parameters are required to initialize a new CWL DAG path to the workflow file and DAG ID. Alternatively, we can put a compressed base64 encoded content of the CWL file directly into your DAG. Now let's take a closer look at what happens when Airflow Scheduler imports our new DAG. There are three main functions that our CWL DAG is responsible for. First, to parse CWL file. Second, to validate CWL syntax. Third, to create a DAG that will have the same structure as our workflow. Once all of them are finished, we can see a new DAG added to Airflow. The same procedure will be done every time Airflow loads DAGs from the DAGs folder. By default, it happens every 5 minutes or whenever a certain DAG is triggered. Among these three steps, the most time-consuming is CWL syntax validation. On average, it lasts about 5 seconds per DAG, but it also depends on how complicated the workflow is. To make sure our system can handle a huge number of DAGs, we should make them run fast. We cannot skip validation step, but we can avoid repeating it for the same workflow. We've implemented two loops for DAX import. The slower loop, marked in red, starts with parsing and syntax validation steps. It ends with creating a pickled version of parsed workflow. Whenever we try to re-import the same CWL file, we follow the faster blue loop and load workflow from the pickled file. On the plot below, we can see a total time required to import 515 CWL DAGs. We've run it five times, comparing our approach with the standard for Python JSON load function that does not perform any CWL syntax validation. As you can see at the very beginning, our approach was almost two times longer than JSON load, but in the next iteration, we shortened DAGs import time tenfold. When DAG is triggered, Airflow will try to run it. For this particular example, the simple bioinformatics workflow will start with preparing the input BAM file. Then it will be converted to bed graph format, then sorted and converted again to big big file. Outputs will be saved at the final step. As we all know, Airflow implements a traditional task-driven approach. Task starts its execution only if its all predecessors have successfully completed. Moreover, tasks are not supposed to exchange any data with each other. At the same time, scientific workflows are more data-oriented. So what we really should be interested in are not computational tasks, but the data produced by them. To make Airflow somehow more data-oriented, we implemented the following two principles. Combining tasks based on the CWL workflow step inputs and outputs allowed us to define the execution order that reflects the data flow in original workflow. As a mechanism for transferring data between tasks, we use standard for Airflow XCOM messages, through which we share locations of the files produced by every workflow step. Additionally, as part of the CWL specification version 1.2, we now support conditionals that allow us to skip execution of the workflow step based on a specific criteria. In this particular example, let's assume that we skipped sort by graph step, thus making the data go directly to the convert to big big step. We understand that we cannot make a data-driven system from Airflow because it was not designed for that, but we see our approach as a good solution for running scientific workflows. Airflow is capable of running on an average laptop, but for large-scale data processing, it's more common to distribute tasks over multiple nodes. Airflow has a built-in salary executor that allows not only to balance the load over the different machines, but also to define task priorities by assigning them to the separate queues. To run CWL Airflow on the Celery cluster, we need to make sure that our DEX folder, as well as temp and outputs folders, are shared among all nodes. Here we can see an example of CWL Celery cluster of four nodes. The tasks are submitted to the queue by node 1 and executed by any of the three workers. Node 1 runs two mandatory components, the Airflow database and scheduler, the latter schedules the task execution by adding them to the queue. All salary workers are subscribed to the same task queue. 
Whenever an arbitrary worker pulls a new task from the queue, it runs the task and returns the execution results to the temp folder. The final step will move results to the output folder. Node 1 can optionally run the Airflow web server and the salary monitoring tool Flower to provide users with the pipeline execution details. In order to give a proper control over the workflow execution process, we developed a REST API. It allows users to create new DAX, trigger existing ones, and get the information about their running jobs. We added endpoints for the most commonly used commands from Airflow command line interface. We also integrated Workflow Execution Service API, developed by the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. The WES API describes a standard programmatic way to run and manage workflows. This standard API, is supported by multiple execution engines, allows users to run the same workflow using various execution platforms. To sum up, I would like to mention the following updates. A new program architecture that is more suitable for large-scale data processing. A new 10 times faster approach for workflow loading and validation. REST API to control workflow execution process. Workflow execution service support as a widely used API for multiple execution engines. Horizontal scaling using Airflow Celery cluster executor. We also started to support workflows with conditionals. And with the recently released Airflow 2.0, we can get benefits from using all of its new convenient features, such as an updated web interface and API. Also, I would like to mention that we became more friendly to the open source community by completely refactoring and documenting CWL Airflow codebase. We keep adding unit tests for a proper continuous integration. We added code of conduct and contributing guidelines as well as updated user's manual. As for the future plans, considering enormous amount of research data, as well as increasing complexity of scientific pipelines, more and more workflow management systems require consolidated efforts in developing common standards and techniques. As we envision CWL as the easiest way to increase pipeline center operability, our minds naturally turn to integrating this standard into the most commonly used workflow management systems, such as Airflow. We believe that bringing these two open source communities closer will benefit both of them. Having visual workflow editors, such as Rebix Composer, will allow non-bioinformaticians create and edit pipelines, as well as directly submit them for execution. Altogether, it will create a surface for collaboration, which will promote innovation and new achievements in science.